Greetings and God's blessing. This is Father Korapi with another episode of Weekly Wisdom. This week we uh, have a very important uh, spiritual topic. I guess they're all important, but this one uh, is certainly one of the most foundational. And as we know, uh, any builder has to start with a good foundation. So if you want to build a good, strong, vibrant spiritual life, you need a good uh, foundation for that too. Now, of course, one could say the chief cornerstone, the foundation uh, of our faith is Jesus Christ, of course. Uh, he is the cornerstone, the rock upon which our faith is built. But people have all kinds of conflicting uh, ideas about uh, what Jesus is like and who Jesus is and what Jesus would do. Um, one of the most important elements of an authentic spiritual life is humility. I've said it so many times before. No humility, no holiness. No holiness, no heaven. And it's that simple, and there is no getting around it. So humility is of absolute uh, fundamental importance. It's so essential. Uh, let me begin by reading to you uh, a passage from uh, the Gospel of St. Luke, the 18th chapter, verse 9 and following. Jesus told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Let me get a little footnote. There, there's no shortage of people who trust in themselves, even for spiritual things. I've run into this quite a bit. Sure, there's lots of it in the world, but there's lots of it in the church, too. Self-righteousness. Um, don't do that. Except for the grace of God, you or I would be the worst criminal on the face of the earth. And if you don't think so, you're in a bad place. You don't have any humility. So... Jesus reminded uh, uh, people of this. They trusted in themselves and they despised other people. Can't do that. Two men went up into the temple to pray, Jesus said. One of them was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. Now, what that means is the tax collectors were considered great sinners in those days. They were a very much despised uh, part of society in among the chosen people. And so this Pharisee, who's a, a doctor of the law, a religious person, a religious leader, uh, he went up to the temple and so drew did a great sinner. The Pharisee stood and prayed this way. God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector here. I fast twice a week, he's bragging to God. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. On the other hand, the tax collector stood far off, and he wouldn't even lift up his eyes to heaven. And he beat his breast, saying, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified, while the other one did not. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Now that's a piece of wisdom for you. Don't exalt yourself. Humble yourself and God will lift you up. So important, humility. Uh, a lot of confusion, though, about what humility is. Now, those of you who know me and have listened to me know that simple little definition I give for humility. Humility is the acknowledgement of the truth. Several of the saints have uh, defined it that way. The acknowledgement of the truth. What does that mean? I acknowledge who God is. God is God. God's everything. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. God's the creator. He's the author of everything. Me? You? All men? Creatures. We're creatures. We're finite. God's infinite. We're finite. He's everything. We're nothing on our own. We're a speck in the cosmos. God loves the speck. 
That's the truth. That's reality. That's humility. The acknowledgement of the truth. The great doctor and saint of the church, Saint Teresa of Jesus, or Saint Teresa of Avila, founders of the Discalced Carmelite Order, and one of only 33 doctors of the church. In the entire history of the church, there are only 33 doctors of the church. That means their teaching was so valuable, so pure, uh, that they were given a special honor. Um, doctor of the church. St. Teresa of Avila is a doctor of the church. She said this about humility. She's talking to her sisters. What I have come to understand is that this entire groundwork of prayer is based on humility. And that the more a soul lowers itself in prayer, the more God raises it up. And the foundation of this whole edifice, as I have said, is humility. Nothing matters more than humility. Imagine that a doctor of the church is telling us nothing matters more than humility. Well, if nothing matters more than humility, then I think we better pay some attention to it and think about it a little bit. You ought to study this reality of of humility. You know, one of the most um, all-time um, popular uh, spiritual conferences or sermons that I ever did uh, was on humility. Uh, that's a, uh, by the way, a testimony to the, uh, to the great good judgment of the Catholic and Christian faithful. They, they know intuitively that that's very, very uh, important. And hundreds of thousands of my talks on humility have gone out all over the world. Um, it's a very, very, very key element of spiritual progress. You know, one, one of the great things you could do, and I assume you want to learn your faith. Uh, that's why you're listening to this. I assume you want to grow in the spiritual life. Remember this, there are no planes in the spiritual life. There are no flat places in the spiritual life. It's a steep mountain. You're either climbing up or sliding backwards. It's an illusion to think you're holding your ground. You're not. Why? Time is ticking. And time is a gift. And we have to show a return on the investment of the author of life who gives us the gift of time. And then we have to do something with it. We have to give him a return on that investment he gives us of time. We have to grow in the spiritual life. So you're either climbing the mountain or you're sliding back down. And humility is of paramount importance. One of the things you ought to uh, get in the habit of doing if you want to study your faith, I'll tell you a very simple way. Get a concordance. Get a concordance of the Bible. That, uh, there's the Strong's Concordance. There's the um, Nelson's Concordance of the New American Bible. They're both published by Nelson. Uh, it's a big, thick book, and it has every word in the Bible. Every word in the Bible. Uh, man, uh, uh, king, uh, humble, pride, etc. Every word in alphabetical order, and where that word occurs in the scriptures. The name of the book, the chapter, the verse. Uh, look at humility, look at pride, humble, words like that. And you'll see every place they show up in the Bible. Then read those passages and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to understand these realities. And then get in the habit of doing that, studying the, the different uh, things that Scripture can teach us. Uh, you'll be amazed how you'll advance in your knowledge of the faith and then hopefully your ability to practice the faith in your everyday life. Years ago, millennia ago, way back at the beginning of creation, after God created the angels, uh, some of the fathers and doctors of the church, and it's in the Catechism, tells us about a test that was given to the angels. Um, the angels were not yet confirmed in grace. 
They had intellect and free will. They were much higher creatures than human beings, uh, much sharper intellect. They were given a test, and some of the fathers and doctors of the church say they, it was revealed to them God's plan for the incarnation and redemption. One of the brightest of all the angels, Lucifer, in brightness that, that indicates intelligence, um, he shone brightly with the brightness of truth, intelligence. You know, one of the most gifted. He didn't like God's plan. No, this shall not be. If you're going to assume a, hu a, a created nature, remember God showed him he would assume a human nature. That's the incarnation. If you're going to assume a created nature, it'll be mine. Mine's better, mine's higher, mine's brighter. Lucifer rebelled. Non serviat. I will not serve. And then, of course, St. Michael, the response. Quis udeus. Who is like unto God? Who do you think you are, creature? That's God's plan. Your business is to obey it, not rebel against it. Jesus said, I watched Satan and a third of the angels fall like lightning from heaven. And the battle was on. Evil entered creation through pride. You remember in the Garden of Eden, what happened there? God had told Adam and Eve, the first human beings, uh, you can partake of all the trees in the garden. Human freedom is very broad. But you will not partake of the tree in the center of the garden or even touch it lest you die. That was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then, of course, the serpent came along. Oh, surely you do not believe God. No, he just doesn't want you to be like him, knowing good and evil. So go ahead, try it, you'll like it. And sure enough, they par partook of that forbidden fruit. Uh, and that's where darkness entered Eden. Uh, that's where sin and death came to the human race. God did not create death. Uh, where did death come from? Death is the re direct result of pride that resulted in disobedience that resulted in death. Just like God said, don't even touch it lest you die. But they did, and they did. They died. And so we are afflicted with pain, suffering, and death. Why? Pride, disobedience. Death, that's the prototype of all sin. Uh, Jesus, of course, in the fullness of time, uh, was sent by the Father. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law to deliver from the law those who were subject to it. Galatians 4.4. 4. And so the new Adam is Jesus, the new Eve. Mary, our mother. And, and, and how did they interface with this reality of sin and death? That they reversed it. How? Humility resulting in obedience, resulting in life. Now, I have just given you a very, very key understanding of the spiritual life and divine revelation in general. All evil came into the universe through pride, which resulted in disobedience, which then resulted in death. Not just physical death, either. That second death that the book of Revelation talks about, that death which really means the loss of eternal salvation. That is death indeed, a kind of a permanent death. So, Jesus, the new Adam, through his obedience... He reversed uh, the, the curse of, of pride. Pro, uh, humility, obedience, life. That's, that's, that's what we have to be zeroed in on in our spiritual life. And I'll tell you, you can cut through an awful lot of confusing haze if you just keep it simple. Bottom line is this. 
Humility is so essential. I'll tell you a little story. Once, centuries and centuries ago, um, the great um, St. Anthony, not St. Anthony of Padua, way before that, uh, St. Anthony of the Desert, uh, you could say he was, he, he was a, a hermit, actually. He was a, one of the founders of monastic life, in a sense, of the more eremitical type. St. Anthony um, was praying out in the desert, and the devil came along. Ah, Anthony, I know you. You think you can defeat me by your holy actions. You fast very frequently. I never eat. You deprive yourself of sleep night after night, keeping vigil in prayer. I never sleep. Yet, you have defeated me, Anthony, the devil said. You've defeated me because you are humble. See, the enemy can't do anything against authentic humility. Uh, everything else he can get around. Uh, oh, you, you think you're very intelligent. You know, we think we know something, even about the faith. You know, you can learn everything about the faith. You can memorize the Bible, every chapter, every verse. And that's an excellent thing to do. But if you don't have humility, you are in trouble. An increase in knowledge that is not accompanied by a commensurate increase in authentic humility is a disaster waiting to happen. And that's why we have so many educated people who just don't get it. So many educated people, even in the church. Oh, they have wonderful intellects, magnificent educations, and they are a disaster because they don't have enough humility. And so the more knowledge you have, the more humility you have to have. It goes hand in hand. St. Paul appealed to us, uh, uh, and this is such a, a key passage, uh, when he spoke to uh, the church at Philippi, in his letter to the Philippians, St. Paul said, if there is any encouragement, any encouragement in Christ, any incentive of love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind, that you might do nothing in selfishness or conceit, but in humility, in humility, count others superior to yourselves. Let me just stop right there. In humility, count others superior to yourselves, especially in matters of faith. You say, yeah, but they're not. Here's the way to look at it. Let's say there's someone in your family or in your community or in your parish, uh, maybe even a leader, a priest, a teacher, uh, and, and you're thinking, oh, well, they just don't get it. Maybe they're not living as virtuously as they should. Uh, maybe they're, they're off on some of their uh, understanding of the authentic teaching of the church. Look at it this way, and say this frequently. Except for the grace of God, there go I. That will save you a lot of trouble. Except for the grace of God, there go I. Uh, if that person had been given all the graces I've been given, or you've been given, huh, they'd be a lot better than us. And that, that's how, now look, if they're wrong, they're wrong. You don't have to say they're right if they're wrong. Don't make that silly mistake. But don't gloat over it and say, hey, you know, except for the grace of God, there go I. St. Philip Neri once in the streets of Rome saw a convicted murderer being led to the gallows. Uh, he, he didn't give a, a, a sermon like the Pharisees saying, oh, I'm glad I'm not like him. I'm glad I'm not a murderer, blah, blah, blah. No, he didn't say any of that. He pointed at the man and said, except for the grace of God, there go I. 
And so you and I aren't in any better than the worst criminal, and don't think you are, lest you set your up, yourself up for a fall. <laughs> Be humble. Count all others superior to yourself. And the way to do that is, you know, I've been given a lot of graces. I was born into a Catholic family. I was given a, a mind that, that, that can um, accept the teaching of the church, uh, God strengthened my will through the sacraments. I've been given an awful lot of gifts and graces. Boy, if that other guy, he'd been given those gifts, I'll bet you he'd be way ahead of me. That, that's, how, that's how you practice humility. And so St. Paul says, look out for the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient. Note the words. He humbled himself and became obedient. First, humility that capacitates you, that enables you to obey. He humbled himself, becoming obedient unto death, even death on a cross, the hardest death of all. And it was thus that God highly exalted him, bestowing upon him the name above every other name, so that at the name of Jesus, Every knee must bend in the heavens, on the earth, and under the earth, and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. So remember, humility, the acknowledgement of truth. God, Yes, God's given you gifts. God's given me gifts. But remember where the gifts came from. God. Give glory to God. Don't, don't exalt yourself. Yes, we have gifts, but every gift we have has been given to us by our Father in heaven. So, count all other people superior to yourself. You know, say, oh boy, if they'd have received the gifts I have, I'll bet they'd be ahead of me. Uh, don't, don't exalt yourself. Humble yourself, and in the end, God will exalt you. And so we come to the spiritual directions corner. Uh, what do we do with this, this knowledge uh, that humility uh, is so important? You know, knowledge is one thing. I've often said it in the past. Um, many of us know more than enough to be canonized saints. Unfortunately, no saint was ever canonized for what he knew, <laughs> only for what he did. All right, it's in the will. That, that's where the difficulty is. So yes, you have to learn it, but once you learn it, that's not enough. And then you have to do it. You have to put it into practice. I'll give you a, um, a little uh, a key uh, for this uh, practice of the uh, essential virtue of humility. Put, always put God first. Put God first. Put everybody else second. Yourself last. And then, of course, uh, the fulfillment of a promise uh, will be accomplished. Uh, the first will be last. The last will be first. God will exalt you. God will raise you up. And remember this. In order to grow strong in anything, uh, for instance, if, if, if physically, we'll use an analogy. Uh, if you want to get stronger, uh, you know, athletes, uh, they want stronger arms. They have to exercise the arms, right? Stronger legs, exercise the legs. More endurance, you've got to uh, push your endurance. You, you've got you've to really uh, work until it hurts. Same thing with virtue, you know. You have to exercise virtue in order for that virtue to gain strength. Um, you want to grow in humility, you want to grow in faith, you want to grow in hope, you want to grow in charity, you want to grow in this, that, the other virtue, it has to be exercised. 
Usually if there is no exercise, there's no strengthening, okay? There's no growth. Uh, and humility, if you want to grow in humility, humility has to be exercised. I've often told the story of a lady one time who came to me and said, oh, I need more humility, Father. Would you pray for me? And she said it, I think, kind of, she was sincere, but she, she didn't realize what she was getting into. She said, would you please pray for me that I could have more humility? I said, sure, and I did. She calls me back a week later, very distraught, upset. You didn't pray for me. I said, yes, I did. She said, no, no. I said, let me finish the story. Everything started going badly. That's right. As a matter of fact, I'll bet you were humiliated. Yes, how did you know? Well, that's what I prayed that she would grow in humility. Do you know what the exercise of humility is called? Humiliation. <laughs> Very frequently. You want to grow in humility, well, you might have to go through some humiliation. That forces you to exercise the virtue of humility. I, I remember my dad in the last years of his life, all, all through life, he was a, a pretty tough guy. He was a pretty strong guy. He, did, he wasn't the most exemplary uh, religious person in the world. Um, but as time went on, he got older and older and older. Um, God went to work on him to help him to grow. Uh, you know, God can do a, a, an awful lot in a little bit of time. God, in a few minutes, can accomplish thousands of years worth of, worth of human effort. And in the last years of my father's life, he was humble. He was humble by illness and, and other things as well. I remember at his prime, in the prime of life, he was a big, strapping, 200-pound athletic man, handsome man. Uh, and I remember one of the last times I saw him alive, he was, oh, less than 100 pounds in a diaper in the ICU after his third open-heart surgery. I looked at him for a long time when I walked in that room. What he had come to, uh, he had been reduced to helplessness. He came out of it, and as time went on, he... I watched it, transformation. Um, he grew spiritually so fast, so fast. Um, it's a tough thing to go through. Um, but if your place in heaven is enhanced for all eternity, it's worth it. He couldn't do it for himself, so God the Holy Spirit did it for him. Humbled him. Why? To punish him? No to raise him up. And that happens in our lives. Uh, if you've been humbled, if you've been knocked down, if you've been struggling for a long time, know very well that that could be the exact thing that God's using to raise you up. Because indeed, those who exalt themselves will be humbled. But in the end, those who humble themselves or are humbled with the help of God will be exalted. God bless you, God love you, and goodbye.